My name is Patrick Michael Carnahan. I'm a folk Americana songwriter. I've been writing songs, oh, for about 20 years. Though I started playing music at a very young age, which brings me to the introduction of this song that I wrote. Actually, I play guitar, banjo, and a few other instruments. But what I started out was with a trumpet and at times a cornet. Started about eight years old, my mom and dad, who lived near Hawthorne, California. There was an old music store called Wallach's Music City, and they bought me a secondhand trumpet. They rented it monthly. And I really took to the trumpet. From time to time, though, I play other people's cornets. They were quite as popular, too. But the cornet itself was an instrument that really had its day back in the 1920s during the jazz era in Chicago, Illinois, as well as down in New Orleans, down the Mississippi River. Of course, Louis Armstrong, he played a bugle, then he picked up a cornet made it popular. But there was one horn player I was always fascinated with. His name was Leon Beck Spiderbeck. He, uh, as a young man, he basically thrashed it. He was awesome. He was the Eddie Van Halen of his time. The man played super fast. Now jazz was accepting to all the young people, but a lot of the older folks and church people didn't care for it. They thought it was music of the devil. But it didn't stop Bix. He kept playing and playing and playing. Unfortunately though, Bix lived a very short life. He was like that shooting star across the midnight sky. He was there one minute and gone the next. Brilliant as he shone, but then he disappeared through depression, alcoholism, and... Uh, but later on, I would write a song in honor of him, a tone poem, an instrumental. The one thing I enjoy about writing instrumentals is you can bring so much to the music through expression, through phrasing, uh, the passion, but to go about this song, I had to decide who was going to play the cornet. I don't play cornet trumpet very often, so I had to think who was going to play cornet. And one of my heroes when I was growing up, as far as trumpet player, was Mick Gillette. Mick Gillette was the original founding member of Tower of Power, the horn section, still plays with him today. So I was able to get his phone number from a friend of mine, Rod Harris at Columbia College, and I gave him a jingle, and I said, I wrote a song in honor of Leon. It was a contemporary, Lou Armstrong, and I wanted you to play it. It's a tone poem, it's actually a lullaby, but I need you to play the cornet. And he says, well, Patrick, I don't have a cornet. So I had to do some research, figured out who had one, and we got him a cornet, actually one that was made in 1920. So in this music video, you'll actually see him playing an ancient cornet which is perfect because that was Bix's instrument during the day. I hope you enjoy this music video. It was filmed at the Columbia College uh, Forum Theater, so it might be a little bit grainy in places. And I've also included some photographs of Bix so that you can remember him like I have through the song. So I hope you enjoy it. And we're gonna start out with an interview with Mick Gillette and talk a little bit about his history and experience with the cornet as well as with Tower Power. I hope you enjoy this. Lullaby for Bix. Hey Mick, here we are at Columbia College and we're about ready to uh, record some original tunes and uh, we're excited that you're here today. And uh, real quick, uh, what's it like for you to play a cornet and uh, do you have a history with the cornet from your youth? Sure, I played the cornet when I was little. Uh, I played mostly trumpet, but I played a lot of cornet, and uh, as my nieces were growing up, they were little girls and they wanted to play too, so I got them cornets, and that's what they always played, so. Excellent. Uh, cornet's a great little instrument. It's got its, it's got its total place in music, and how it belongs, and what kind of songs it fits in, so it's a great instrument to train the young people on. Now, Mick, uh, when did you start your uh, your music? At what age? Uh, I, I started playing trumpet at age four. My, uh, I had a brother three years older than I, and uh, my dad bought home a trumpet for him. And uh, he, he, my brother didn't really care about it. I really wanted to play it, but my dad said, I was too small, don't touch it, you're gonna break it. And every time I'd watch my dad give my brother a trumpet lesson, I'd, after they'd leave, I'd sneak the trumpet out and try the stuff he taught him in the lesson. And my dad would always start going, you know, in, in the 50s, you know, you get a belt if you, if, you do, if you do things like that. Well, I, one day I snuck it out and I watched him teach him the scale and I'm sitting there on the bed, practicing with my fingers while he, and he doesn't care. And all of a sudden I see he leaves, my dad leaves, and I see my brother running by the window outside, and I hear the garage door shut, so dad's outside. 
I went snag that trumpet and I started playing da 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 and the door opens and I just dance my dad. And I'm busted. I'm just red handed. And he goes, Well, you're finally practicing. And he looks around and he goes, Where's your brother? And right then he goes running by the window outside and I went, uh, he's, he's right there, Dad. And he goes, That was you? And I said, Yeah, I'm sorry, oh Dad. I just really want to play the trumpet. He goes, That was you? You played that scale? Just do that again. Wow. And I thought, oh boy, I'm either off the hook, I'm gonna get my butt kicked. So I played the scale and I walk around and he sat there and looked at me for a second wow. and then he snagged me in the horn and we jammed to the music store. He ran in and bought the Arbin's book. And before we went home that day, I, I could read music. Wow. And I started playing six, seven hours a day, seven days a week. Jeez. And by the time I was eight years old, I went to my dad and said, hey, I need a new book. And I don't know if you know what the Arbin's trumpet book is, but it's this huge, thick, it's the trumpeter's Bible. And he said, that trumpet, that book will last you all your life. He goes, well, you, you can play everything in that book. I'll get you a new book. And cocky little son of a gun that I was, I handed him the book and I said, here, pick a page. And he opened it up to the back of the book, one of the hardest pages. The hardest songs, right? He says, here, play that. I go, oh, gee, Dad, you picked a really hard page. Well, get open to that page. That's the page I was always open to. I had that page memorized. And then I started playing real slow, and then I just stepped up, and I started just blazing through it. I'm eight years old, and he, he's, by now he's just grinning ear to ear because I walked around behind the stand. I'm not even reading it. I'm playing it by memory. And he reads the whole page down. He goes, well, I guess we're going to have to find you another book. And he couldn't find anything that, that challenged the Arbus book. Wow. So that was the last day I practiced. Hmm. And uh, I've just been playing ever since. So, Mick, how did you uh, start with the group Tower of Power? Uh, we were in high school. We went to different high schools together, you know, in the same school district. And uh, they were the band was called the Gotham City Crime Fighters. They're, they just quit dressing up like Batman and Robin. Uh, their first single was called Who Stole the Batmobile. <laughs> it was not a big hit. But I, uh, I joined the band. They wanted to put horns in the band. They were starting to play some Otis Redding, Memphis-style stuff, right. and Stax Bolt stuff, and, we, and Sam and Dave. And so we, I started playing with the band, and uh, I was only horn for a while. Wow. And I built it up to five horns. Wow. And, so uh, you were the leader of the horn section. I didn't know I, that. I, I, every day I was in that band, I was playing. Wow. Wow. I left in 1984 when my daughter was born. Yeah. And here it is, 2009, and I'm going back in the band. So yeah, years. fantastic. Well, Mick, we're so glad we have you here today. and. Uh, we're excited, uh, and we look forward to your performance. Thank you for being a part of today's uh, performance. It's an honor. The uh, right. black Irish thing's a big part of my heritage <laughs> in my life. That's why they call me Mick. That's right. You're a good Irishman. Thanks for inviting me. All right. Thanks for coming, Mick. Pleasure. Okay.